Is this the beginning of the end for European basketball as we know it? Okay, 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 let me explain myself a little. It might sound like a very bold question, but the future of leagues like the Euroleague, EuroCup, BCL and the domestic leagues in Europe is looking a bit shaky right now. In this video, I'm going to break down the major threats European basketball is facing and what they could mean for the sport's future. First, let's talk about the NCAA's new policy on name, image and likeness monetization. This is the most recent and at the same time the most impactful change. Starting from the 2024-25 season, college athletes in the US will get paid for their NIL. This is huge. For example, Kasparas Yokochanis, a promising Barcelona youth prospect, has already signed with the University of Illinois, where he'll make up to $750,000 per season. Granted, that's before taxes, but that's still a lot of cash, especially for a young athlete. We're talking about a similar wage as EuroLeague players like Lukas Lekavicius, Sylvain Francisco or Leandro Bolmaro. The appeal of developing professionally in Europe just won't be as strong anymore when there's serious money on the table in the NCAA. Of course, there are gonna be limited spots in college teams, so it's not like all the youth will move across the Atlantic, but you can bet the top talent will. This change in the NCAA landscape isn't just a problem for clubs like Barcelona. It will impact the entire European ecosystem. Young players who once saw European leagues as the peak of their early careers now have a financially lucrative alternative plus this way they improve their visibility to the NBA scouts. Another thing to consider is the bigger incentive to stay in college for a full four years, meaning only guaranteed first round picks might choose to enter the draft in the first place. This way the potential pool of new players, both American and European, who don't make it to the NBA would further be delayed from moving on to Europe. Over time this will not only affect the quality of talent coming in but also the marketability of European basketball. Fans want to see rising stars grow and if those players are all heading to the NCAA we are only going to aggravate the next issue. Which is the fact that the Euroleague is aging and is aging badly. The top players in the league are almost all in their 30s. Look at the top 25 Euroleague players in efficiency from the 2023-24 season. Only one player is 20 25 or under and just 6 are between 26 and 29. The MVP of the 23-24 regular season was 33 while the final 4 MVP was 34. That's just not sustainable. With fewer young talents coming through the ranks, the Euroleague risks becoming a retirement league for older players. And this reliance on veterans is just a symptom of a deeper issue. The constant win now mentality. In Europe, all that matters is winning. Coaches are often let go and most of the time it is directly related to their results. As a consequence of that, coaches tend to rely more on their experienced players instead of giving time and space for youngsters to develop. And in general, there is no incentive to develop young talent, as the best the club will get out of it is a buyout of up to a few million dollars, but more likely a few hundred thousand. This trend is definitely hurting the league's dynamics, and the big question now is, what will happen when the current stars get older and retire? The long-term health of any sports league depends on the steady influx of young talent, and right now, European basketball is struggling mightily in the this area. By the way, the alarm bells are already ringing. The EuroLeague CEO Paulus Motiunas had a press conference during the Final Four where he clearly expressed his concerns that the NCAA NIL deal is disrupting the European market. He also said this, I don't think it's good for the players because getting these salaries at 18 is a big risk. Only strong personalities can handle this money and popularity. I guess it depends on perspective as young players could also just look at it it for what it is, just an opportunity to make decent money in the beginning of their careers. Those who will be done with college and won't make it to the NBA won't have other options but to play for potentially lower money, so they will. Now before I go into the other threats, a quick shout out from the sponsor of this video, Hostinger. There's many options for designing websites, but Hostinger has done the work to make this experience as simple as possible. Save your money and time learning about coding or design. Instead, just try out 
about 150 designer-made templates that are fully customizable, or even better, just use Hostinger's AI website builder. It lets you use a text prompt and get started in less than a minute. And also, you don't need to think about some external company to host the website with. It's all available at the same spot, plus you get your domain for free. Check out the link in the description and with our code BNews10, get 10% off of all hosting plans. Next, we have the NBA's potential expansion to 32 teams. This isn't just a rumor, by the way. It's a likely move once the next set of media rights deals are completed. More teams mean more spots for players. Specifically, if you add two teams, you're looking at at least 30 more NBA slots that will open up. And you can bet that they will be looking at the best talent available, many of whom currently play in Europe. This expansion would further deplete the talent available for European clubs. It's already tough to compete with the NBA's prestige and salaries, and with even more opportunities in the NBA, young and talented players will be even more inclined to make the jump. As I mentioned before, it also means that the European clubs, which have invested time and resources into developing these players, often see them leave just as they reach their peak performance levels. This constant turnover of talented players makes it hard for European teams to build and maintain competitive rosters. The fan experience also suffers when favorite players leave for the NBA. Just last year, we saw two former EuroLeague MVPs depart to the NBA, and I wouldn't be surprised if this trend continues in the upcoming years. Now let's consider the G League. This league has been growing and growing, and by the 2024-25 season, all NBA teams will have a G League counterpart. This expansion means even more spots for players, with two-way contracts offering up to $500,000 per season. If you do the maths, 30 times 2, that's 60 slots up for grabs, and it's another avenue that will likely attract talent from Europe. Sure, the biggest issue in the G League is that nothing is guaranteed. But once again, when we're talking about young players, it's an opportunity that many have pursued in the past and will pursue in the future. Lastly, there's the growing threat from other international leagues like the NBL in Australia and the B League in Japan. These leagues are stepping up their game both in terms of competitive play and player salaries. While they might not yet match the prestige of the EuroLeague, they are certainly becoming more attractive alternatives. We've seen young players like Alex Saar and Lamelo Ball choosing the NBL to develop their skills. The NBL offers a platform for young players to shine, which can be harder to find in the EuroLeague, where again we come back to the win-now mentality. In Europe, young players get less time and more pressure to deliver immediate results. If these leagues continue to grow financially, which seems very likely, they could pose a serious threat to European clubs, drawing away both young prospects and established players. So what does it all mean to European basketball? Well, it's not looking great. The combination of better financial opportunities in the NCAA, the NBA's likely expansion, the growing of the G League, the rise of the international leagues like the NBL and the B League, and an aging EuroLeague player base all spell trouble. European clubs are finding it harder to attract and retain top talent, and without that talent, the quality of play will inevitably decline, which would halt the growth of basketball in Europe. But all hope is not lost. European basketball has a rich history and the most passionate fan base. What clubs in the EuroLeague really need is to get creative and find new ways to compete financially. This might mean venturing out to those markets that don't seem attractive to the fans like the Middle East. It could also mean finding new revenue streams and improving marketing efforts to attract a global audience. The fact is that something has to be done as European basketball is at a crossroads. The challenges are real and significant and it's going to take a lot of effort from the clubs, leagues and players, but if there's one thing we've learned from the history of basketball, it's that this sport has a way of surprising us. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think European basketball is doomed or am I catastrophizing and being very negative? If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe for more basketball content and I'll see you in the next one.